recording uh, right now. So welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Cynthia Mitchell. I'm the Program Manager of Membership and Events here at CHF Canada uh, and I'm joined by a few colleagues. So Denise McGann is our Program Manager for Southwestern Ontario and she will be monitoring the chat tonight. So if you do have any questions, feel free to type those into the chat and you can find your chat box at the bottom of your screen. Just look for a little uh, chat box icon and feel free to type those in there. And we also have uh, Gabe Bissett who's joining us from Vancouver. Uh, it would be afternoon time out in Vancouver and Gay will be handling any tech issues that come up. So if you do have any tech problems, uh, Gay will be able to help you with that. And I know we do have a few other staff uh, who have joined in, but I won't put you on the spot, uh, but welcome everyone. Uh, so I first want to start off with a land acknowledgement. So I'm grateful to be joining you tonight from the unceded, unsurrendered territory of the Algonquin Anishinaabe uh, and grateful to have you all joining across uh, Turtle Island tonight. All right, so let's just get right into it. Um, just a quick poll to start off. So curious to know if you've been to a CHF Canada annual meeting before, uh, and this could be both of our virtual annual meetings that we had over the past two years or prior to that as well. So the answers are rolling in, which is great to see. All right, and we still have a few people joining, so that is great. Okay, I'll just give maybe five more seconds and then I will close the poll. All right, so I'm going to end it and then I'm going to share the results. Look at that, 50-50. So 50% have been uh, to an annual meeting before and 50% haven't been. So for those who have been before, um, I think you'll still get some information that's useful tonight. And for those who haven't been, I'm sure you'll get some information that uh, that is useful. All right, and we have another poll question. So just curious to know which part of Canada are you from? Um, so I will go ahead and I will launch the next question. So you're from Atlantic, where we're going to be heading, Quebec, Ontario, Prairies, or British Columbia and the Territories. We'll just keep that up for maybe another five seconds or so. Okay, so I'm going to end the poll and share the results. So majority, about 69% from Ontario, uh, and then followed by Prairies, 17%, a few out west in British Columbia or possibly up north, the territories, and then a few out, uh, out east. So it's great to have everyone uh, joining tonight. Okay, so just what we'll cover in the next, uh, just under an hour or so. Um, so really the webinar is meant to give you a primer of what to expect at this year's annual meeting, our first, uh, annual meeting in three years time. So very much looking forward to it and very much looking forward to seeing you all there. Uh, so we'll cover when you first arrive in Halifax, what should you do? Where should you go? Uh, we'll also review some COVID-19 information uh, and then we'll walk through the schedule for each day. Uh, we'll briefly go over the resolutions and then we will look at some FAQs and helpful hints. And again, if you do have any questions that come up um, throughout the webinar, please feel free to type those into the chat and Denise uh, can get back to you or I can answer them um, on the air. So uh, let's get rolling here. So you've arrived in Halifax, likely either on the Wednesday or Thursday. So what should you do? Well, after checking into your accommodations, you'll want to head to registration. So registration is located um, on the convention level of the Halifax Convention Center. So you'll come in on the Argyle level and then you'll go down a floor uh, to the convention level and you'll look for these kiosks and they're going to be staffed by uh, local volunteers who are in blue t-shirts. Blue is our color this year because we are out east. Uh, so registration is open uh, Thursday from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. If you are a co-op manager or staff, we have earlier registration hours from 4 to 6 on the Wednesday. Uh, and if you're arriving a little bit later, maybe Friday, we do have registration still open from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. So you'll go to registration and they will give you a tote bag. Uh, so in your tote bag, it has some pretty important information, so you'll want to hang on to it. So you'll find a registration envelope and that contains this handy little 
conference at a glance. Oh, okay, it does kind of show up, not really. Um, but this conference at a glance has all of the schedules and events and the timing of everything that takes place throughout the conference. And it's a good size. It actually fits into your name tag and lanyard. So you can have that handy uh, throughout the conference. And also on your name tag and lanyard is your personalized agenda. So again, that's very handy. You can just know um, exactly what your workshops are, the location, all that good stuff uh, is right on your lanyard. Also in your registration envelope, you will have your event tickets. So any um, tickets that you purchase for the optional social events are in there and your local social ticket is also in there too. And then also in your, your tote bag, there's going to be some sweet swag. So we have some chocolate bars this year, and some saltwater taffy, um, some other fun stuff. Also some COVID-19 safety information because we're still in a pandemic. Uh, how to download the app and our conference Wi-Fi login info. And then just some local information. So a little map uh, for Halifax and a little local activity guide. Okay, so speaking of COVID-19, uh, so just to kind of quickly review what our uh, safety protocols are. So obviously when we were planning this uh, event, we uh, wanted to ensure the health and safety of attendees um, being our top priority. So we have an event plan that includes on-site signage, um, we have self-isolation protocols, and we do have a flexible cancellation policy. So I'll refer or I'll review those in the next few slides. And also just in terms of the convention center, um, so the HCC has implemented obviously enhanced more frequent cleaning, especially of high touch areas um, and fresh air is introduced well above the required amount. So just a few uh, notes about what our venue is doing to keep people safe. So what are we doing? So we are encouraging attendees to wear a mask well indoors. You'll notice that all CHF Canada staff um, will be required to wear a mask well indoors. Um, and obviously just some, you know, things that we're familiar with at this point. So washing your hands regularly, uh, coughing or sneezing into your elbow. Um, and if you are showing symptoms of COVID-19, you will need to follow Nova Scotia requirements, which require immediate self-isolation until you have either a negative PCR test result or two negative rapid tests. So one taken immediately and a second 48 hours later. And if you're wondering where do I get these rapid tests, we have them. Um, so in that COVID flyer in your kit bag, it has it will have a number. And if you need to self-isolate and you need a couple of rapid tests, just call that number and we can get those rapid tests to you. So as mentioned, we do have those rapid tests. Again, if you do need to uh, self-isolate, we will be providing prorated registration refunds. Um, and should you uh, not be able to attend the conference, if you test positive one week before, um, full refunds will be provided for your registration fee. So no worries there. Okay, so walking through the schedule, starting off with Thursday. Again, if you are a co-op manager or staff, you have a few optional events on the Wednesday, um, but things really get going on Thursday with registration. So open from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, co-op staff and managers, you have an opening plenary and brunch from 10.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. And then workshops. So workshops really get going in the afternoon. So the first slot is from 1.30 to 3, and then there's a half hour break. Uh, and then they get going from 3.30 to 5. And then Thursday evening is really just kind of the receptions and there's the local social. Uh, so some co-ops will be receiving a special loyalty award. So if you are one of these co-ops, you will find your ticket in your registration envelope um, and you'll get uh, either a 20, 30 or 40 year loyalty award. So we have a reception um, from 5.30 to 6.30. And then if you're a co-op staff or manager, uh, we have another reception from 5.30 to 6.30, and if you're a young member, so 35 years or under, you'll want to swing by the young member meetup, and again, all the location information is included in your um, conference at a glance, so that's from 6.30 to 7, and then everyone is invited to the Maritime Kitchen Party, so that's the local social that the local planning committee has been planning for two years now, so it's going to be a good time. Uh, there's going to be a live band, uh, dancing, a knitting corner if you're into knitting. Um, there's also going to be a huge raffle, so be sure to bring some cash if you want to get on, in on that. Um, and all the money raised for the raffle goes towards their local charity of choice. And there was just one other thing I want to mention. Yes, um, so the local social is going to be at Pier 21, so it's the Canadian Museum of Immigration. Uh, it's a really nice walk along the Halifax waterfront. It's about a 15 minute walk from the convention center and where everything is taking place. 
But if you don't feel like that walk, we do have a shuttle. Uh, so the shuttle is going to run every 15 minutes from the residence inn. So that's just just across from the convention center, the hotel. Um, so all of that information, again, will be in your um, ticket on your ticket for the social. OK, so moving along and I'm just going to take a look at the OK, so nothing has come up in the chat. Um, but again, if there if there are questions, feel free to type those in there or just raise your hand and, and we can answer them. OK, so Friday, so Friday, your workshops continue in the morning from 930 to 12. Uh, and then we have the trade show from 12 to 2. So be sure to swing by the trade show. There's going to be cookies and coffee. Uh, and you can play our trade show trivia game and win over $1,000 in door prizes. Um, so you can play through the app. It's that easy. And then we have your last set of workshops in the afternoon from 2 to 4.30. Um, and then the reception from 4.30 to 6. Uh, so this is something new this year. We're not doing a dinner and dance. Um, for those who attended previously, you'll probably remember that we had a big dinner and dance on the Friday night. Um, but we figured, you know, Halifax is a really great city to, to go out and explore. Um, so if you, if you don't want to go out and explore, but you do want to partake in some social events, we do have a couple of social events uh, lined up. So we have the member networking dinner uh, and the local sightseeing and co-op tour. So both of these, I should note, are sold out. Um, so if you didn't get your tickets for this year, uh, there's always next year. And for the local sightseeing and co-op tour, you will have your dinner provided. Uh, so you don't have to worry about going out and rushing and getting your dinner before that. It will be provided and then you'll have uh, some time on the tour to, to eat at one of the stops. Okay, and then Saturday, we're already at Saturday. So Saturday is really your meeting day. So you'll, you'll have your regional meetings in the morning from nine to 10.30. So this is where you meet with uh, members from your region, from your province and discuss topics and issues of importance. And then from 11 to four is the national business meeting. So just like at your co-ops, how you have an AGM each year, this is our AGM. And this is your chance to um, direct Canada's co-op housing movement and to have your say. So you'll hear from our president, Tina Stevens, and executive director, Tim Ross. You'll vote on resolutions, and I'll talk briefly about those resolutions. Um, you'll hear financial reports. There will also be some special awards. And then we have two really exciting keynotes. So we have um, the CEO of Peace by Chocolate, uh, Tarek Haddad. So I mentioned those chocolates, so you'll, you'll get those in your tote bags. Uh, and then we also have um, L. Jones. Um, Jones. Sorry, I'm just getting some feedback, so I'm just going to mute. There we go. Uh, L. Jones, and she is a local uh, poet and activist. Um, and then we also have some special performances, and lunch is provided. So you don't have to worry about going out and getting lunch on Saturday. Um, that is provided uh, during the business meeting. Okay, so, oopsies. Skipped over a poll. Okay, so I just have another poll here. So we're curious to know, what are you most looking forward to at the annual meeting? Is it meeting other members from across Canada? Is it learning at the workshops? Having your say at the national business meeting? Being together again? Or all of the above? Okay, I'm and I'm just gonna take a quick look at the chat. Doesn't look like there's too many questions coming up here. Yes, the, there is free Wi-Fi at the HCC. Do you have extra masks if we run out? Yes, we do have extra masks. Okay, I think most of these have been answered. Okay, um, yes, I can swing back to the Thursday schedule. I'll do that now before we, we skip ahead. And masks are recommended, um, they're not mandatory. Okay. Well, let me end this poll and share the results. Okay, all of the above, 60%. And then we had 29% uh, learning at the workshops and 2% for having our say at the national business meeting and being together again, and then meeting other members from across Canada, 7%. So that is great to see. So I will just skip back. I had a message to skip back to the Thursday schedule. Oopsies. There we go. Okay, so this is the Thursday schedule. So again, it's pretty much just uh, registration in the morning and then a chance for you to go out and explore a little bit, um, grab some lunch if you're not a co-op manager or staff person. 
and then workshops uh, from 1.30 to 5.30, and then receptions in the evening, and then local social from 7 to 11. So I hope that answers your question there. And again, we do have the full schedule up on our uh, event website, uh, and it will also be in the conference at a glance, and your personalized schedule will be on your badge. Okay, so I will just continue along here. Did the poll. So now just going to quickly talk about the resolutions that are up for discussion at the national business meeting. So your co-op uh, should have received a package in the mail. I believe we mailed them out either end of April or early May. Things are kind of a blur right now. But um, if you didn't get the package from your manager, no worries. We have it up on our website. So you just need to go to our CHF Canada website, click on the big Halifax image that pops up. Um, and then click on democracy and then the drop down resolutions and reports and all the resolutions are up there. So very quickly, the first resolution um, is a general member policy update. So similar to how your co-ops have to you know, update their bylaws from time to time, we have to do that too. So this one is asking for approval um, on updating a resolutions policy and a finance and audit committee policy. And in the resolutions package, you'll see where we've um, added the track changes. So you can see easily what the, the changes are that we're proposing. And then the next resolution, resolution two, is a very exciting growth resolution. Um, so a lot of you might have heard that there was some exciting news in the last federal budget um, about 1.5 billion being dedicated to developing the next generation of co-op housing. So this resolution really kind of sets the wheels in motion for CHF Canada to do that, uh, to develop a new cooperative housing development program. So we are anticipating seeing an initial 6,000 new co-op homes developed over the next five years. Uh, so this resolution really kind of sets the foundation on which we'll build uh, the next generation of co-op housing. So lots to look forward to there. And then the next resolution, resolution three, is also growth related. So it's called Homes for People Before Profit. And it calls for CHF Canada to continue advocating to the federal government to develop more co-op housing, especially for Black, Indigenous, and other communities who experience uh, housing need. And it also has an acquisition lens. So what this means um, is it really urges the federal government to preserve affordable market rental housing and help enable co-ops and nonprofits to buy that kind of housing so it doesn't fall into the private um, market and become even more unaffordable and kind of like luxury market rentals. So it really keeps it affordable for forever, for perpetuity. The next resolution, resolution four, um, is really kind of building on the success of the Fix the Formula for Co-ops campaign. Um, so this resolution calls for CHF Canada to work with the newly elected provincial government, and we'll find out who that is tonight, uh, to uh, put things in place for HSA co-ops to continue to have uh, rental assistance um, and also look forward to the renewal and growth of co-op housing in Ontario. And last but not least, uh, again, like at your co-ops, we have financial resolutions. Um, so these financial resolutions will ask for your approval on the 2021 audited financial statements, uh, approve the 2022 auditor, uh, approve our 2023 dues rate. So we're asking for a 10 cent increase uh, from this year's dues rates to next year. And then also to receive the budget and the 2023 operating fund forecast. Okay. So I just very quickly went over the resolutions, um, but I imagine your co-ops, your boards, if they haven't met yet, then they probably will in the next two weeks. Um, and they'll kind of decide as a board how you should vote. So they should pr be providing information to you about how you should vote when you get to, to Halifax on these resolutions. Okay, I'm just gonna pause here and see if there are any questions that came up in the chat um, it looks like Gay and Denise and Sophie are all answering them, um, but I will just check in if there's anything that I should answer on the air, or if we're good to keep going. Okay, it sounds like we're good to keep going. So thank you, thank you everyone for answering those questions. Uh, so there are no elections this year. So there was just one seat uh, that was up for election and that was the Finance and Audit Committee seat. And it was acclaimed by Judy Skinner from Church Isabella in Toronto. 
Okay, so going over some helpful hints. So before you head to Halifax, um, it's a good idea to check out the Delegates Handbook. And we've just added this to our website, again, under Democracy and Resolutions Reports. Um, so this is a really great resource if you are the delegate or even if you're the alternate um, to give it a give it a kind of look over uh, before you head out there and even when you come back just as a little refresher. Um, so really what your role is as the delegate, I like to think of you as sponges. So you're there to really kind of absorb new information and ideas and bring it back to your co-op. Uh, you're there to vote on the resolutions that we just ran over and you're there to meet and connect with other members from across Canada. And if you're the alternate, um, really your duties are to step in if the delegate needs to leave the business meeting, either you know, to go to the bathroom or get some fresh air. Uh, so the delegate will pass their voting keypad to you and then you vote on behalf of, of the co-op in their absence. Okay, another uh, little tip before you head out to Halifax, uh, I mentioned the app, so it's going to be available for download June 9th from our website. Uh, so through the app, you can create your own schedule, you can access the location and times of all the events, you can even message other attendees, and you can play our trade show trivia game and win some great prizes. Okay, and some more helpful hints. Always a good idea to wear your name tag. It's uh, going to be hard to remember everybody's names that you meet, so always a good idea to, to wear your name tag. Also a good idea to dress in layers. Uh, anyone who's been out to Halifax in mid-June knows that the temperatures vary wildly, so it could be uh, nice and sunny and warm, or it could be rainy and cool and windy. Um, and it's also a good idea to bring a sweater for the convention center. They tend to run, run chillier um, than other places. So also a good idea to put your name on your meeting book. I forgot to mention in your uh, registration bag, you'll have your AGM meeting book. So a good idea to put your name on that so it doesn't get mixed up uh, with hundreds of other uh, books that will be there. Okay, some other uh, helpful hints for your workshops. Um, you're going to be absorbing a lot of ideas. There's going to be a lot of information coming at you, um, but really kind of listen for those key messages and don't try to write everything down. Uh, most workshops will have kind of a one pager handout of the key points and messages. So, so your work is done for you a little bit, um, but it's also a good idea to make notes uh, at the end of each day to help you remember really kind of what you took away. What were those key ideas uh, for when you report back to your co-op on what you learned? Um, also a good idea to pace yourself. We have, you know, jammed a lot into those three days. So, so be sure to pace yourself and also have fun. For those who have been to an AGM or an annual meeting before, you'll know that it is a good time. And for those who haven't been, you're in for a treat. Okay, some more helpful hints. Um, be sure to drop by our CHF Canada display table. We will have a lot of resources uh, to take back to your co-op. We've just done the packing today, so we are sending a lot of stuff out there. So be sure to take some back to your co-op. Uh, talk to our friendly staff. We are always happy to, to chat with you, to answer any questions that you have. And again, be sure to visit the trade show on Friday. It's also gonna be there on Saturday. Uh, you'll have a chance to meet over 30 vendors, pick up some good swag, uh, be entered into win some door prizes and lots more. Okay, when you're at the business meeting, some helpful hints. If this is your first time as a delegate, um, you might wanna sit with an experienced delegate, somebody who has been there before and can kind of show you the ropes a little bit or um, provide some tidbits about kind of what's going on. And people are really happy to share their, their past experiences. Um, if you do wanna speak up at the microphones, microphones, plural, uh, you'll see that there's gonna be six kind of located throughout the room and they all have a number. Um, so when you go up to a microphone, the chairperson will recognize you by the number on the microphone. Um, and you're, you're gonna wanna state your name and the co-op that you're from. So our uh, minute taker, Gay, can note this in the minutes. Um, and if you are a delegate, make sure to pick up your voting keypad and I'll go over that in the next few slides. And in the meeting book, there are a few blank pages um, that you can use to take notes, again, to help you report back to your co-op. Okay, so just a quick note about these voting keypads. Um, so starting in 2019, we, we got with the 21st century and we started using uh, electronic voting keypads to vote instead of holding up those uh, voting books. So if you are the delegate, you will want to pick up your voting keypad before the business meeting starts on Saturday. So we have a few times uh, on Friday from 1 to 5 and then Saturday from 8 a.m. to 11.30. Um, so just look for the kiosk marked voting keypads outside of room 101 of the convention center. So this will be the same spot uh, that the registration kiosks were located. 
Okay, and just some helpful hints for after the annual meeting. So when you get back, starting on June 19th, if you are very eager, you can download the workshop PowerPoint presentations directly from our CHF Canada website. Um, so you'll just have to go to education, resources, and then scroll down to workshop materials. Um, and you can get all of the workshop PowerPoints there. We won't be printing the um, workshop PowerPoints ahead of time just to cut down on, on paper usage. But again, a lot of the workshops will have kind of a one pager at the, the key points. And again, no rush to do this. We will have the workshop materials up until next year's annual meeting. So they'll be up for a full year. Okay, just some more helpful hints for when you get back to your co-op. Um, so what are some of the things that you should report back to your co-op on? So we suggest, you know, things that you learned at the workshop, some of the key ideas, key takeaways, things that you want to see happen at your co-op. Um, what were the key things that were discussed at the national and regional meetings? So did the resolutions pass? Um, maybe a little bit about kind of the discussions that were had. And again, any sort of interesting new ideas that you learned from, um, from the annual meeting, either from talking with other members or from the <laughs> workshops. Um, always a good idea to be creative when you report back so if you did take any photos or you can take some photos that we shared on social media um, any videos we will have um, the business meeting up on our youtube so even if people want to watch the recording of that they can do so and we really encourage you to spread the energy of the annual meeting with with your members so i'm sure um, for those who have been before and um, those who it's going to be their first time, you'll really kind of feel the energy of being in a room with over 500 other co-op members from across Canada. So really encouraging you to share that energy when you get back to your own co-ops um, and when you report back on what you learned. Okay, and just a little plug for social media. So if you are on social media, feel free to post your photos, your favorite moments, uh, key takeaways. You can tag us at CHF Canada or use our hashtag CHF Canada 2022. And we will also have a social media board by our display table. Um, so be sure to check that out. You can see your posts, you can see other people's posts and all that good stuff. Okay, so just some FAQs. Uh, so when will your participant confirmation be emailed? So keep an eye on your email next Thursday, June 9th. So you'll get an email that includes um, your workshop confirmations, your schedule, um, and just again, a review of our COVID-19 information. So a lot of what we covered in tonight's webinar will be in that email next week. Uh, is the annual meeting accessible? Yes, all of the venues that we use for the annual meeting are fully accessible. Um, the HCC is a, is a new venue. I think it was built maybe five years ago, six years ago. Um, so it's fully up to date in terms of accessibility. Uh, again, you can get your workshop PowerPoint slides and handouts after the annual meeting. So starting June 19th. Um, and again, you'll just need to go to our uh, website and then education, resources and workshop materials. And if you do have questions at the annual meeting, where should you go? So you can ask any volunteer who's wearing a blue shirt, or you can visit CHF Canada staff at the Conference Services Office, which is room 101, or you can drop by the display table and our staff will be happy to help you. Okay, so that's it. Um, q and A. I'm just going to check in the Cynthia, q and A. Yes. The, there was one question that I wasn't... Um... 100% sure, so I thought I would check sure. in with you. Will coffee be available all day? Are, yes. restu are there restaurants near the convention center? Yes, that's a great question. So there is going to be coffee. Um, we are going to have a morning coffee break and then an afternoon coffee break. Uh, so there will be coffee. And also in the afternoons, there's going to be, I believe, fruit punch and iced tea. An important question. Any other questions? Okay, I think Denise and, and Sophie and Gay, I think you've done a great job answering them in the chat. So it doesn't look like there's any other questions that have come up. Can but you see, yeah. I can just see Ernie waving to answer, to ask a question, Cynthia. Okay, go ahead, Ernie. Thanks. Um, will there be water in the rooms? Like, is there like pitchers? Is there bottled water? What, what if we don't want yes. coffee, we want water? Yes, yes, Ernie, there will be water in the rooms and it's going to be a, a pitcher. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. No problem. Any further questions? Hearing none. Okay. Well, uh, you, it, there, yes, go ahead. 
uh, there seems to be something Mary's saying I did not get my question answered about travel within Canada and I'm sorry I did not see that question Mary um, I don't know if you're able to unmute yourself and and maybe just ask the question okay um I'm Mary um I'm just wondering uh, I understand you don't have to somebody kept saying to me you have to um uh, register with the can, but you're within Canada. I, d I didn't think you would have to do that. Sorry, I missed the the reg okay. after registration. Sorry. Okay. W within Canada, you don't have to register with Arrive Can, but that's only when you're c traveling, you're coming into Canada. You have to do that. That's not correct. within Can. Is that yeah. correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, d I don't want to go to the airport and somebody said to me. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. No, you don't need to travel that. within Canada. No, within Canada, we 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 just need our passport, our, our vaccination passport, basically. Correct. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. That's all. I need to get that clarified. That's all. Okay. That's a good question, Mary. Yes. Thank you, uh, Jane. Yes, I was just wondering um, because we're going to be flying there from Ontario, and and they're having problems in airports. How 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 far be before our flight should we be getting to our airports? Good point. I'm hearing for Pearson at least three hours. Um, yeah. yeah, so make sure to give yourselves lots of time uh, before getting to the airport. Even if you're traveling in, in Canada, you have still that wait, eh? Yeah, yeah, I think because there's just such a shortage of staff. Um, oh, so okay. e even here in Ottawa, I think we're anticipating kind of two hours for, oh, for no. domestic. In Pearson, we need to be at the airport three hours prior to our flight because there's such a shortage and the time to get through yeah. is insane. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So All right, thank you. That's a good note. And I think we might do some communication out that, about that too. It would be a good idea. Going. It would yeah. be a good idea because like, I'm kind of concerned. I'm I'm somewhat handicapped, and I've got to get to that airport and yeah. stand in line. Five and, hours to pass check. Five hours. Five hours to pass a check. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. So thanks for bringing that up, Jane. We'll we'll definitely do some communication around that um, to make sure that people give themselves plenty of time before before heading out to the airport. All right. So if there's no further, oh yes, Sharon. I think Sharon had a question, but maybe Sharon will uh, will pop up again. Um, if you do have any, sorry, sorry. Uh, Ernie said he might have another question. Is that true, Ernie? Uh, yes, it is. Okay. Um, yeah, because they were only telling us ninety minutes. Okay. Yeah. Let me find. Well, there we go. Okay. From from what I understand, there's basically no public transit in Halifax. If you're leaving on the Sunday, it, can anything be done to arrange some kind of carpooling? I mean, if all the delegates are trying to go back on a Sunday, it's all like private limousines that you have to do. That's what the hotel has said, and that's what various other people have said as well. Is there anything being done in this regard? So we do have some information on our website about kind of group travel. Um, so I would recommend checking that out. And I'm okay. just going to check to see if there's anybody local who is on the call tonight um, who can answer that about the bus service. My understanding is that there, there is bus service on the Sunday to the airport, um, but it's probably it's not going to be as regular as, as weekday. Um, but what I can do is I can just make a note of that um, and confirm what the, the public transit situation is on the Sunday. And it was Ernie? Yes. Okay. Yes. The pub, from what I understand, the public transit from I phoned the bus company and etc. and the limousine uh, representatives and the, the public transit on, on the Sunday is really not not great. Let's say it can be improved a lot. Okay. Okay. Especially um, if you have an early flight. Yeah. Yeah, I guess the only other kind of recommendation that comes to mind is going in on a on a cab with a few other people who are traveling to the airport. Um, so yes, they do they do have cab service. I just see the the question here on the Sunday. I'm not too sure if Halifax has Uber. Again, if there's any any local Haligonians 
on the call. Airport shuttle, yes. So on our website, we do have information about um, kind of private shuttle services. Lisa is saying that they do have Uber, which is great. Um, okay. Yeah. So I hope that helps to answer your, your questions, Ernie. It does. Thank you. Okay. Good stuff. Okay. I see Wayne and then Sharon, you're back. So we'll go to, we'll go to Wayne first and then we'll go to Sharon. <clears throat> go ahead, Wayne. Oh, yeah. yeah. I was just unmuting myself there. Yeah, for sure. Uh, there we go. Um, I was just wondering if, um, you know, what's the role of Chazio at the CHF conference? Do they have a, an independent presence yeah. there or oh, they bring a, like a table or delegation or something and they have resolutions that they introduce or something? So, um, so, so Chazio can, can register to, to attend just like any other member. So they're a member of CHF Canada. Um, so I would, I would maybe just recommend checking in with, with Chazio to see if, they are going to be attending or sending a delegation, but they are, there's not going to be, there is an Ontario, sorry, there is an Ontario Federation's trade show table. Um, mm. Yeah, so I hope that answers your, your questions, Wayne. I didn't look at the uh, program. Is there like a separate uh, Ontario meeting? There is, there is yes. Yeah. So mm. I, I, sorry, I kind of skipped over that. So on the Saturday morning, the regional meetings. Um, so there will be an Ontario regional meeting and then one for BC, uh, mm. one for Alberta, another one for Manitoba, Saskatchewan in the north, and then one for Quebec and one for the Atlantic. Right. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. It's kind of the same format as the, it's usually had at most CHF conferences. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, great. Yes. Thank you, Jacqueline, for answering those, those local questions. Uh, Sharon, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, sorry. I'm not used to wearing headphones. Um, I'm traveling as a visually challenged uh, alternate delegate mm -hmm. from uh, Hamilton. Um, I'm bringing my own computer, like it's a laptop with adaptive technology. Um, but is, it, is the material going to be accessible for me? Yes, yes. So we do have um, large print uh, meeting materials. So for both the uh, AGM um, itself and then for the workshops. Um, so we, we do have those on hand and, and we will make sure to, to have those. Does that meet your uh, accessibility needs? Um, well, I also asked for it to be sent through um, so I could have it on my computer okay. as well, because my computer reads things back to me, but I usually wear one headphone so I can listen to my computer and listen to whatever else is going around around me as well so I was just um checking in yeah yeah for sure Sharon we can get you those materials in advance so for both your workshops and then for uh the AGM meeting book thank you very much no problem thank you for for noting that okay well, it is an airport shuttle okay um any further further questions if, if not, if, if something comes up um, afterwards, feel free to email uh, uh, staff. So I'll just put my email here in the chat. Um, happy to answer any questions that you have maybe tomorrow or in the next, next couple of weeks. Hi, I'm just in a Zoom meeting for my Halifax trip. Can I call you back? Yeah, no worries. Okay. Um, what I'll do now is I will launch our last, wait, no, two more polls. Um, so, oh, I don't know if I shared the results for that. Anyway, so we will go to this last question here. Do you feel ready for the annual meeting after attending this webinar? So yes, you're counting down the days. No, you still have questions. And again, feel free to reach out if you do have questions or somewhere in the middle. Okay, so I think I'm gonna go ahead. Uh, there's just a few more votes coming in. So I'll give another five seconds. And then I'm going to end the poll and share the results. Okay, so that's great. 73% are counting down the days, only two weeks to go. Uh, and then 27% somewhere in the middle. So again, if you do have any um, questions or concerns about things, feel free to reach out and, uh, and myself and my colleagues will be happy to help. Okay. And now going into the last survey question. So just curious to know if you have visited the annual meeting website yet. So it looks like that at the bottom there. And so the poll has been launched. See the votes coming in. 
have another five seconds. Okay, and I'm gonna end the poll, share the results. So that's great, 74% said yes. 15% uh, not yet, but I will as soon as this webinar is finished. And 11% said no, that's okay. Okay, so that brings us pretty much to the end of our webinar. So thanks again so much for joining. Um, I'll just check to see if there's any further questions. Doesn't look like it. Um, so I will be sending out the recording of this webinar uh, to those who registered tomorrow. Um, so again, if you do have any questions, feel free to reach out. But this was really wonderful um, to see everybody virtually. And I'll be seeing you soon in a couple of weeks. So thanks, Cynthia, everyone. Yes. One, one last question. Sure. Um, Ernie was asking, will there be a delegate list? There, that's a good question. Um, we definitely do have a delegate list. Um, I, I'm not too sure about us sharing it, but if you go onto the app, you'll be able to see all the participants um, who are attending the, um, the annual meeting. But in terms of a delegate list, I don't know if we can share that um, specifically. I'm not too sure, maybe Gay or anyone else staff-wise? Yeah, I, I don't think we're able to share that list there. I don't think we ask for the right um, to share the list. So, yeah, yep. yep. there's there is one other question as well, um, Cynthia. Will there be any kind of broadcast or live updates from the conference for the folks back home? Yes. So, good question, Wayne. Uh, we will be streaming live streaming the business meeting on the Saturday, so people can watch that on our YouTube channel. Uh, if they so wish, and then we will have the recording up uh, as well of the business meeting on our YouTube channel. Okay. Well, again, I think that's it. Oh, Sandra, Sandra, I see that you have yeah. your hand up. Yep. Yeah. I just wanted to mention if, if there's people from Toronto that have not booked their flight yet, the Island Airport Porter uh, is a flight um, have good deals on right now, and they have direct flights from the Island Airport to Halifax. Okay. All right. That is a good tip for anyone who hasn't booked their flight yet. So thank you, Sandra. Yeah. You're welcome. All right. Well, again, thank you, everyone. Uh, enjoy the rest of your evening and see you in a couple of weeks. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs>